Hello and welcome to your August 21st daily briefing. Today we're going to discuss the most important updates with the next stimulus package, unemployment, and we're going to do a little bit on the stock market at the end of this video. Now I didn't have an update for you yesterday because I believe that your time is valuable and there simply wasn't enough that happened yesterday to merit an entire video. So go ahead and hit that like button and let's get into the news for today. Just a few days back, representatives sent Nancy Pelosi and Steny Hoyer a letter stating that people are still in need more than ever and they would like the House to vote on a bill that solves the enhanced unemployment issue this weekend while the House votes on a bill addressing guidance and funding for the post office. Initially, about 50 representatives signed off on this letter and now more than 100 have joined in agreement that we need a solution for unemployment and they want to go ahead and extend it at $600 per week. So I I commented on this Wednesday saying it would be a great idea politically and negotiation wise because the Senate simply isn't going to pause their recess to vote on a standalone post office house bill. But if there's a bill that helps the post office and contains a reasonable stimulus, it would be reason to get them to vote before the Senate is scheduled to be back. Well. Despite the support for this, Nancy Pelosi has announced that she will not have any vote on stimulus relief this weekend. They will vote on the post office bill and that's it. This is an extremely poor decision and I'll explain why. Pelosi is negotiating like she holds all the cards but that just simply isn't the case anymore. Three weeks ago, she did because McConnell was aware that if he wanted to get a stimulus bill passed, it would have to be through Democratic support. This is because a large portion of the Republican Senate will not vote on any more stimulus relief. Pelosi and other key Democrats knew that they had the upper hand and they squandered it. They squandered it by not giving up enough in negotiations and now they have lost that position but apparently haven't lost the idea that they have the upper hand. With every day that passes, it seems fewer Republican members care about getting relief passed and this makes the strong Democratic position even weaker every single day. You can absolutely tell by the news coverage on this. Until this morning, nothing has happened in nearly two days regarding the stimulus. No comments, no care whatsoever. The stimulus bill is becoming like that weird cousin that no one really talks about anymore. Like everyone, you know he's there, but you know, we're just like, let's not talk about that anymore. <laughs> McConnell is saying he's not sure relief is even going to be passed despite the need for it. And Mark Meadows has said pretty much from the beginning that negotiations aren't getting anywhere and he doesn't see them going anywhere. So back to Pelosi. Let's talk about her reasonings and concerns about passing a small stimulus bill. A small stimulus bill could include anything from enhanced unemployment solutions, another stimulus check to paycheck protection solutions, things that are in a lot of agreement on both sides could be included in a small stimulus bill. Well, first she says a small stimulus bill this weekend would undermine negotiations and progress on a large bill. And here is a quote from her on this, just so you can have the exact context of how she feels. I don't think strategically it's where we should go right now because the Republicans would like to pass something like that and say, forget about it. Forget about state and local government funding. Forget about our investments in stopping the virus. Forget about other initiatives that feed the food insecure children in our country. Vote by mail initiatives and the rest. So part of this is very hard to argue. It's hard to deny that a small solution to the most immediate problems could make it harder to solve the rest later. If Republicans say, hey, our issues are solved, we're not going to vote on anything else. That is a valid concern. I absolutely agree. However, here's a question that I'd love an answer to from top Democrats. What do you care about more? you care more about getting necessary relief to those most in need or do you care more about winning this negotiation just for the sake of winning? It seems to me like if you really cared about an issue, you'd be able to accept a small loss to make a little bit of progress and help those in need. Isn't one solution better than no solutions? And this isn't some kind of anti-democratic rant because, don't get me wrong, Republicans have also made their fair share of poor decisions here, and heck, so has the president. There really is not one person or group that has done an amazing job navigating any of this relief bill, but 
as of today, this is where I'm seeing the most issues when it comes to the stimulus bill. So that was Pelosi's first concern, which is a valid concern. However, her second concern is she says if the House were to pass a standalone bill to extend unemployment, Senate Republicans could then, quote, add poison pills to that bill. This is a very poor argument and pretty frustrating to read, actually. And you're probably going to be frustrated after I explain why. This is kind of like saying, I'm not going to pass a bill because it might not get voted in. Uh, yeah, that's how bills work. You could argue that any bill might get a poison pill added to it. So that same argument could go to say, I'm never going to pass any bill ever because of these poison pills. <laughs> a poison pill is basically an amendment to a bill that renders all or part of that bill useless, but that bill would still need to be approved by the House if the Senate made changes. So it's kind of a moot argument. Just because this bothers me when someone makes an argument that just doesn't make sense, let's take a minute just to talk about the process to get a bill voted in. I'd like to take a second to talk about this video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. You can explore new skills, develop existing interests, and get lost in creativity. A course of theirs that really piqued my interest was Real Productivity, How to Build Habits That Last by Thomas Frank. I enjoyed this course because it shows the reality behind high-performing individuals and teaches about tools and tricks you can use to keep yourself accountable in your work. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is the place to keep you learning. Skillshare is giving away two months of free premium memberships to the first 1,000 people who click the link in the description box to help you explore your creativity. And after that, it's only about $10 a month. So first, a representative sponsors a bill. Any representative can introduce a bill while the House is in session by placing a signed bill in the hopper on the side of the clerk's desk in the House chamber. This is why we originally saw so many stimulus proposals, because any representative can write a proposal, put it in that hopper. Second, the bill is then assigned to a committee for study. So the bill is first placed in that clerk's hopper, and then it goes to the appropriate committee who debate it, make amendments, ask questions, etc. Third, if released by the committee, the bill is then put on the calendar to be voted on, debated on, or amended. Then if the bill passes by a simple majority, which in the House 218 of 435 representatives must vote in favor, the bill then moves to the Senate. In the Senate, the bill is assigned to another committee similar to the House, and then if it's released, it will then be debated on and voted on within the Senate. Then the next step is the important one here. If the Senate makes changes, the bill must then return to the House for concurrence. Basically, the House needs to approve of the changes. And this is generally why the poison pills argument is a completely moot point. So just to finish this off, the resulting bill then returns to the House and the Senate for final approval. It must be an identical bill. They must both agree on it. And then the president has 10 days to veto the final bill or sign it into law. And boom, that's how it works. If you are interested in this process, let me know, and I may break it down even further into its own dedicated video because it's pretty interesting and it could be, you know, a standalone five to six minute video. So let's finish off this video with some final news updates. First, we have some updated unemployment numbers. The Labor Department reported that new unemployment claims increased by over 1.1 million last week. That's an increase of 13.9% over the week before it. These are extremely scary numbers to me. I did some digging to try and figure out why new unemployment claims increased to see what the exact cause was. Are more businesses failing? Are more cases of COVID? What's going on? But unfortunately, I was unable to find any super reliable source here, which I found kind of strange. But what we do know is this new data impacted the stock market for all of about six hours. <laughs> the S&P 500 dropped about 1% in reaction to the unemployment news, but has since nearly recovered completely right on par with record highs. Record high numbers in the same week where there are 1.1 million new unemployment cases. Insanity. Really, all this shows is the need for relief, and I hope to see a solution very soon. I hope to be able to report this to you and everyone else in need. So this is all I have for today. I'd like to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a profitable day.